Hello friends and followers, Jack Fleming here. I've got a new order of prints in and we're going to be signing these and bagging and boarding them today and talking a little bit about prints. Let's get to it. Okay, a little voiceover real quick while there's video footage here of me opening up these prints and getting them ready to sign. This video is really kind of intended for other artists that are interested in getting into selling prints. Um, with that, I'm going to talk a little bit about why I sell prints, a um, little bit about open series prints, issues I've had in the past with trying to get prints made, a little bit about different kinds of prints, not a whole bunch there, uh, prints versus originals, cost and stuff, uh, why I package things the way I do, why I sign them the way I do. Try to cover all that in this video. First off, why sell prints? I think as an artist, you kind of need to figure out for yourself what your goals are with your business. I know some artists that only sell originals and don't want to have anything to do with prints, and it works great for their business model. I have a friend that uh, mostly sells out of galleries, and that's worked for them. Um, for me personally, I do have stuff selling in galleries. I sell originals there, but that's not really the market that brings me a lot of joy. I personally enjoy being at events on weekends, meeting the people that are interested in my art or meeting other people that might become interested in my art. Um, for me personally, because I do automotive art, I usually set up at car shows. Sometimes I set up at art fairs and festivals. But for me and for the people that I'm marketing towards, prints make a lot of sense. People at car shows and stuff aren't really there to buy fine art. They might be there to buy a memento or something of the occasion. Um, things that they like that they'd hang in their garage or something like that. And they're willing to spend 20 or $40 on a print versus spend $600, $800, a couple of thousand dollars on an original. Not to say that there aren't the people out there that buy originals, but the vast majority is way more interested in prints. The biggest part of that, for me, driving factor, I guess, is when I'm at an art show and somebody picks up one of my prints and looks at it, especially the kind of illustration ones that I have, um, that have a whole bunch of cars in them, it's really cool to see their faces light up while they're looking at it. See them maybe giggle because they uh, catch one of the jokes that's in them or something. That's kind of what really drives it for me. I like that experience. I like meeting people and I like making artwork that makes people happy and if I can get more artwork out to more people and make them happy that's kind of a plus for me I can only sell so many originals but as far as selling prints I can sell hundreds of prints and make hundreds of people happy as opposed to that one collector for sake of time I kind of want to move on to talking a little bit about some of the problems that I've had in the past with getting prints made and why I'm where I am now on getting prints made. Um, but if you guys have any questions or comments or anything about why I sell prints or why you sell prints or don't sell prints, let me know in the comments. Alright, I realized while I was editing this video there's just way too much to talk about whenever it comes to prints. If there's anything that I don't answer in this video that you guys have questions about or any tips that you have that might even help me improve or whatnot on, on what I'm doing, please feel free to make a comment. Maybe somebody else can learn from it as well. Uh, I did want to tell you a little bit, and it's kind of why I jumped in here to make this little video insert. Um, when it comes to making prints, where I'm at right now, I mentioned the company Cat Print is who I'm getting prints through. I like the quality I'm getting from them. I'm ordering stuff on real heavy cardstock. Um, and the print quality is really good. They say that it's G-Clay printing. Uh, there's plenty of videos out there that kind of get into that, so I won't really get into that. But I did want to kind of tell you a little bit about why I'm where I'm at with making prints. When I first started four years ago and decided that I wanted to do prints as part of what I was doing, um, I went to local print shops, hoping that I could find one that I could get prints through and keep everything local. You know. The problem that I had is I'm in a small town. We have a few print shops. There are shops here that can't make prints um, like what I want. Uh, the shops that I found that would make prints the way that I wanted, I started off with them and I was really happy to start off with. Uh, but 
you know, I made prints, sold out in three or four months from the prints that I had, came back to make more prints, and their staff had completely changed. And with that, the person that I had worked with before that saved all my information and stuff on the computer so I could come back and make prints again wasn't there anymore. And with that, nobody could find my information on their computer. So that was a big hassle for me. Um, we had to go through and scan everything again. I had to pay them for their time to do color corrections again. Wasn't very happy with that. On top of that, I never knew what inks they were really using and what the papers were. They couldn't tell me enough about it because it's not what they specialized in. They specialized in commercial printing for other businesses and stuff. Um, things that weren't meant to be saved and hung on walls. I had people tell me before, you know, go to FedEx, Kinko's, places like that and get prints made. Again, the quality of those prints there is not what I was looking for for my customers. I don't want to charge my customers an arm and a leg. I want to have, you know, good quality for a good price. And that sent me going online looking for people that I could get prints through. I follow a lot of other YouTube channels that talk about art and stuff. Other artists looked into some of the people that they recommended. I found one company that I really liked, and they were out of, I think, Massachusetts. The prices were reasonable. Uh, they weren't great for me as far as overhead, but I felt that the quality that I was getting was good. Uh, actually really high quality, like photo paper and stuff like that. The issue that I had with that is my customers that I talked to and stuff that gave me feedback kind of really didn't care. <laughs> they wanted something that wasn't going to fade on their walls and stuff, but they didn't really care that it was super archival. They're not really looking to invest hundreds of dollars into these a lot of times. If they did, they might buy an original from me. And other options that I have, well, I guess we kind of backtrack on that. I think it's good to have options for your customers. Um, I think it's good to have price points. So these prints that I'm talking about here are the bottom part of my price point. 20, 40, 25, maybe $50, somewhere in there on prints. I do offer more expensive prints. I offer canvas prints. They're G clay prints that are signed. Um, of course I have my originals for another higher tier up. There's different people that collect at different prices. And I hear it all the time, and I really like the mentality of it, that somebody who might buy a $20 or $40 open series print from you now might be that person who invests later on and wants to buy an original. Um, so you're kind of being able to offer more to a lot more people. Kind of getting back to the plus side or the advantage for me of going online with stuff is most of the companies that I've dealt with online, um, when you order through them, your files are automatically saved. So if I go back to order again, I can go right to what I've ordered in the past and just hit reorder. Makes it a whole lot easier for me. So I don't have to worry about things getting lost. New people coming in that don't know what they're doing because everything's already set up. Uh, but we'll get back to the video. I just figured I'd jump in real quick and tell you that. Again, if you guys have any questions or any comments, Put them down in the bottom. If we need to make another video covering print stuff, if there's questions that you guys have that aren't in this one, please let me know. And I actually look forward to hearing from you. Let's get on with the video. Okay, since we are signing some prints, boarding some prints and all here, I thought it might be a good opportunity to talk about prints a little bit. Um, as I mentioned earlier, you know, these are on really good quality paper. I got these from a company called Cat Print. I believe this is their heavy card stock. Um, they say they're G clay prints, and I think they look really good. I've got the original here to compare to it, and one of the things. That I always notice it's so hard in any prints and books, you name it, to get color to be exactly the same. So that's why the original is always going to be a bit superior, aside from the fact that it is the original. Um, but let's look real close here. If you look at my oranges on my original here, the orange is a little bit more vibrant, right? Um, try and see if we can compare 
some of the other colors. I notice on my print, the little flesh tones in this guy, it's not a big difference, but they're a little lighter here. Um, just vibrancy, really. But I can't be more pleased in how well the details showed up in this. There are no issues whatsoever of losing any details, of any kind of fuzziness. Um, very pleased with these prints and how they turned out. This is the second time for me to order from this company. Really like the prints I got last time. Um, one more comparison to make here. I got some reprints made of my giant Gila Monster movie uh, poster here, drive-in movie. And something that, that I think is kind of a cool thing to compare, these prints right here, I made a video a little while back of me coloring the image with alcohol markers. First time doing that. This, something I'm more used to, I used watercolors. And I'd actually love to know what you guys think. Do you like the alcohol marker colored prints or posters better? Or do you like the ones that have the watercolor? It's got some brush marks and stuff like that in it. Hoping to make a whole lot more posters in this vein. And I'd love to know what you guys think. I kind of feel like these are a little bit brighter. Maybe a little easier to read. But you guys tell me. Let's get back to signing. Just a quick note about signing prints. I sign my prints in pencil. Um, often there's still a signature from the original that's been printed. But when you see that pencil one on there, you can tell that that's... An original signature and it's not printed, doesn't have all the pixelation and stuff. I have thought about going to a print-on-demand kind of situation with prints, but the problem if I did that is I wouldn't be able to sign all of them, and to me that kind of makes them a little bit more special. I try to sign every one, even the ones that I ship out to people. Thinking about it, there are times whenever I don't sign in pencil, I use a gel pen, and that's times whenever the pencil's just not going to be seen because that part of the print would be too dark. Uh, these are all signed in pencil, though. Right, real quick, some of these prints that I ordered came in a tube. Um, these are the larger prints that I ordered. I ordered 16 by 20s. The other prints that I got, some are 11 by 17, some are 11 by 14. This company that I'm using right now, Cat Print, they've got an amazing price um, for getting prints made that are 11 by 17. It's kind of what they specialize in, it looks like. I know they get a lot of artists that are comic book artists, and that's the format that they usually use. So the 11 by 17s that I got, the picture back here, the drive-in movie, um, those were probably the most cost-efficient um, prints that you could get from them. The 11 by 14s, I assume that they're probably printing them on 11 by 17 and then cutting it and charging you for that cut. The 16 by 20s have to come out of a different printer. Um, and whenever they mail them, they mail them in a tube, so when you get them, they're all rolled up you got to do something about that. So what I do is I go ahead and I flip them upside down and I try to find some stuff that I can put on top of them. I'm trying to keep them clean. As clean as I possibly can. But I put something on top of them to weigh them down and let them sit for a little while before I go through and sign them. So I'm going to go ahead, lay all these out, lay some, actually I'm going to lay all my older print boxes and stuff on top of them and let those sit here and weigh them down and get them done roll a little bit. Uh, I will say, whenever you order prints from me, um, getting ready to launch my website again. I know I keep saying that in videos, but it is coming. Actually hoping to get it launched tonight. Uh, I ship my prints and mailing tubes like this as well. They're super strong, sturdy, Plastic caps at the end. I put them in a plastic bag first, um, plastic sleeve, and then roll them up inside. That way, if any moisture or anything gets on the tube or whatnot, it's not going to damage the print. And they do all come signed. Uh, well, let's go ahead and get these weighed down, and we'll come back to them and sign them later. Okay, while we're letting those larger prints flatten out, I'm going to show you guys a little bit about bagging and boarding. Oh, got that upside down right there. Uh, this is a 16 by 20 print. I order 16 by 20 clear bags. 
and 16 by 20 boards for these and then I order 11 by 14 bags and, and boards for the smaller ones. Sometimes I have ones that are even smaller than that. You might have seen these prints if you've seen me the show. These ones are 9 by 12 and I have to cut the boards down and whenever I package them, seal them up, I have to bend the plastic over and tape that down. I could probably go ahead and order 9 by 12 cardboard, but it's actually cheaper if I don't. Um, get a pretty good quantity of them in this size and then cut them down. Uh, when I get ready to bag these, well, let me show you this. The bags come in a big old bag, full of bags. Uh, they have a little cellophane sticky part that pulls off. You can flip that over and it seals them. The boards come in a big box and a big pack. I said I buy mine either 11 by 14 or 16 by 20. So I'll slide the one and the other and then I slide the artwork in. After I've done that, all of mine, I always try to put my business card down in the back of them. That way if somebody buys my artwork and they maybe want to see more of it, maybe they saw me at a show, they might be able to go to my website or find me on social media. Maybe they want to order something else or they want something pinstriped or something my phone number's on here email address all my contact information in case they need that um i guess let's go ahead and get started uh bagging and boarding some prints all right i'm just going to do this on top of the prints that are being flattened out i've got a large box of Board sitting on top of them, which is pretty heavy. Um, go ahead, get my plastic sheets ready, and I am simply well, we've got boards right here. I'm simply just going to sit here and one at a time put boards inside of bags, and that sounds kind of boring, so. I'm going to speed this up, put it on hyperlapse, and then we'll get back to it. Alright, so these prints right here are 11 by 17, so my 11 by 14 boards are not going to do. I am going to take 16 by 20 boards and cut them down. I use the old classroom paper guillotine here. So, let's go ahead and get started. Latch that. Uh, so when I'm done cutting all of these down, I end up with all this scrap that's really good stuff. It's kind of, you know, thin cardboard or works as really strong paper. A lot of times what I use this for is anytime I got to do any kind of knife work, cutting something out, I'll put one of these underneath it. Keep from scratching up my table so those kind of stay on hand. Let's uh, bag and board some more prints. All right. I mentioned that things were a little different whenever I go to bag these 11 by 17s. I've got to cut the board. I've also got to tape the board after I put the print in. So let me show you that real fast. I've got my board. Find my flap. Goes in my bag. My print. Also in the bag. Now I try to make sure that my print faces the side that doesn't have the sticky part on it. So that goes in there. Get my business cards back out. Throw a business card on the back. And then I'm going to flip this over. I'm not going to peel the sticky off this time. I find that I have problems when I do that. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this down, try to get it pretty tight, get a piece of tape, 
I try to put the tape towards this end over here so it's not flapping. And then take the top part and fold it down. The reason that I don't use the sticky part on my 11 by 17s is in this part right here when I fold it down I almost end up with air inside the bag and it makes it just kind of a pain in the butt. This way all the air can escape. So we're going to put piece of tape on that side, piece of tape on that side, and then I'm done. So custom size, plastic, and board there. Go ahead and get the rest of these done. You know, I'm going to save you guys the boredom of sitting here watching me bag and board uh, the 16 by 20 prints because it's more of the same thing that we've already done with the others. There's no cutting. There's no folding This is what those look like bagged and boarded um, Hope you guys are finding this interesting The reason that I thought it'd be good to put this video out is I know there's a lot of other artists out there that I've talked to that are interested in getting into prints and You know, I had questions whenever I got started with it. Where do you get boards from? Where do you get bags from? I get mine off of Amazon um as far as prints are concerned, I'm still kind of always looking for maybe the next best thing for a print company. But at the moment, I'm really quite pleased with uh, this company, Cat Print. I like the prints that I've gotten from them. I like the paper it's on. Really easy to deal with. I kind of like their website as far as setting stuff up. Uh, you know, I bought a scanner here earlier this year so I could scan my own prints. I haven't gotten to where I can do that for these really large ones. I'm still having to pay somebody that's got a bigger scanner than me um, to go through and do that, do color corrections on the computer. Kind of gotten to where I'm okay with doing that with these smaller ones. But if you see one of these that you like, you know, come find me at a car show. These are my newest ones right here. Very excited about that. Uh, again, that website should be up soon, www.jackflemingartistry.com. Hopefully I'll have prints there to sell. They won't be bagged and boarded. They'll be bagged and then shoved in a big mailing tube. But if y'all have any questions at any time, shoot me a message in the comments. I try to always read them and always answer them. You can email me, jackflemingartistry at gmail. Uh, if you enjoy this, please hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Check out one of my other videos. They should pop up somewhere around here. Y'all have a good day.